When police have to get rid of a drug syndicate, they have to arrest every player. Those sourcing the drugs, the supplier, the buyer, and the desperate couriers that move the drugs around. In this case, you'll see players from every level, buying, selling, and moving drugs. The man at the top of the drug tree is the Mr Big of Queensland, Wayne Patterson, and he does his drug deals in hotel rooms just like this. Or he did, before police got a tip off. Wayne Patterson is a 49-year-old career criminal based on the Gold Coast. He walks with a cane, the result of an old car accident. And police have seen him regularly travel to Sydney to meet up with men who supply him with drugs. He was a businessman through and through. He tried to negotiate the best price for the best product that he could get. His business motto is simple, buy drugs on the cheap in Sydney. G'day. And then on sell the drugs to street dealers on the Gold Coast. The Gold Coast, home to a good time. Eager schoolies arriving once a year to celebrate the end of year exams. And events like Indy. And a constant flow of backpackers. It's a gold mine for the likes of Wayne Patterson. Police need to shut him down. It's February 2006, and detectives put Wayne Patterson under video surveillance. This is some of their very first footage. It's straight from police archives. OK, we've got our boy with the limp coming out. Looks like he's carrying the, his suitcase. We've got mustard shirt carrying a red bag. In the early stages of the investigation, we didn't know who his suppliers were. We didn't know who his buyers were. And to work that out, police need to know what happens inside the hotel. So we had to think outside the square. Um, and the best way was to install listening device capabilities of both audio and visual, which would give us uh, an idea of what was happening inside those rooms. Police have only a few hours to sneak in and rig the room before the target will check in. Let's go. Oh. Okay. What you're about to see is what police saw, recorded and played live from the room they just bugged. But it's not Wayne Patterson. Police quickly identify him as Daniel Hutton. Daniel is a drug courier, and he's here to collect 3,000 ecstasy tablets for his boss. Hey, um, I'm in 617, room 617. Can you give me a ring? My mobile phone's flat too. At that particular time, Hutton didn't care what was happening. He thought he'd got away with it. Um, he was going to get paid for a job that he was sent down to do, and uh, he was quite happy and jovial on the phone to, to um, Patterson. Hang on, I've just got to pack me boots on. Hang on, we'll wear I've got you on loudspeaker, so you're all right. Hang on, who's that with? No one. I'm just, no, I'm just strapping me boots on. Police can barely believe what they're seeing. Daniel is strapping the ecstasy pills to his legs with household cling wrap. Quite confident that he was going to get away with these items strapped to his legs. His plan is to catch a commercial flight. Yeah, a commercial flight from Sydney to the Gold Coast with the pills hidden under his jeans. For this, he'll get a couple of hundred bucks. And if he gets caught, there's no escape. It's straight to jail for up to 20 years for trafficking. It's high risk, but Daniel needs the money. There is no turning back. So did he make it? Did he get in his flight? Well, he got through the x-ray and he passed the explosives check. Well, that's no surprise, really. Ecstasy wouldn't have shown up on either of those. But just when he thought he was in the clear, he gets a tap on the shoulder. Come with me, sir. All designed to look like a random airport search. 
so police don't tip off the big boss, Wayne Patterson. Strapped to his legs were the ecstasy tablets that we'd seen him strapped to his legs back in the room. He just felt unlucky that, that he'd been the one picked out for this random drug search. And all this for just $500. Wayne Patterson's rate card for desperate drug mules. So will the drug lord take the bait, come out and be caught? Police have just arrested Daniel Hutton, a drug courier, trying to smuggle $60,000 in ecstasy pills from Sydney to the Gold Coast. News of his arrest has made it back to his boss, Wayne Patterson. When Patterson found out that Hutton had been arrested, um, he went into a bit of a tailspin. He decided that he would come down, strangely enough, to purchase more drugs, even though his friend was sitting in a jail cell. He was still a businessman, regardless of uh, what had happened. Um, to him, it was something that was just bad luck. Patterson has just made a booking to stay at the same Sydney hotel his courier stayed at just two days earlier. It's a race against the clock as police rig up another secret camera, hoping to gain intelligence on the syndicate. It's now 11pm and Wayne Patterson is under surveillance. That's him in black with his back to the camera. There you go, buddy. Good, man, good. He's in Sydney meeting with his regular drug suppliers. Think of them as brokers or middlemen. They sell drugs to him in Sydney, and he will then sell those drugs on the streets of the Gold Coast. The first supplier is Louis Ivanovsky. He's 40 years of age, unemployed, on welfare, and drives a black BMW. As you do. He was someone that was just out for a buck. He wanted to make money out of the enterprise that he was in. Um, he had a bad back, so he wasn't able to work and make money, so this was his avenue of making a dollar. The guy on the left is Mr Big's driver, Scott Van Hooten. He'll stay for every deal and then drive the boss back to the Gold Coast. Louis is about to sell Wayne Patterson cannabis and ice. That's what I'm used to. Nigel, what's that? Well, what's that? Does it look like this? Joey. You're an absolute idiot. That's yours. Yeah, bro, look at it. It's chunky ass. What's the matter with you? But at that time, there was a shortage of ice on the Gold Coast. There was an incentive for Patterson to come to Sydney. He could get it at the right price. He could get as much as he wanted, take it back to the Gold Coast. That's what I'm saying to you. That's why that shit's dynamite. But, like I said, dude, if you want to run with the other shit, run with the other shit next week. It makes no difference to me. Louis then suggested that um, he take an interest in a supply of cannabis leaf, uh, a sample of which he'd brought to the room that evening, and which Patterson looked at and was interested in buying large quantities in the future. It's one and a half pound. That's a half pound. Another one's one and a half. Another one and a half. Another 50 grand. So it's three to 150 grand a week. Yeah, they bring it on. They, they feed off. But there'll be no cash changing hands today. Wayne buys on tick or credit. And he'll only pay Louis once he's on sold the drugs in Queensland. So if Wayne goes down, Louis loses the lot. Patterson has the goods and begins preparing the stash to take home to the Gold Coast. They were able to uh, package the, the drugs in uh, Cryvac bags. They'd actually brought the Cryvac machine to the room uh, with bags and fortunately for us, they decided to pack the bags in right in full view of the camera. The Cryovac is a vacuum sealer to keep the smell of the drugs in. Seeing these two package the drugs right in front of the camera there was just golden evidence. We couldn't have hoped for better. But the closer Mr Big gets to the camera, the greater the risk he'll see it. It's 2am and police have been secretly filming the occupants of a Sydney hotel room for three hours now. 
Drug dealing is a 24-hour business, and Wade Patterson's next round of suppliers arrive. The man on the right is Ronnie Tell. Ronnie's done time for drug distribution in the UK and the United States. Ronnie Tell was a bit of a character, a bit of a larrikin. Liked to use a bit of his product that he was supplying. Again, another businessman, but probably not so much as shrewd as Patterson was. And now he's about to sell ecstasy. Yeah, it won't be more, yeah. It's definitely. <coughs> the most it could be is actually 653. The man in the middle is a student known as Asian Ken. He's unemployed but lives in a swanky apartment in the Sydney CBD. But what police don't yet know is that both Ronnie Tal and Asian Ken are big operators and Patterson is just one of their clients. Now that the deals are done, it's party time. Ronnie pulls out a pipe and starts smoking ice. Meanwhile, police are like flies on the wall, watching their every move. But could the syndicate be getting spooked? They begin talking about Daniel Hutton, the courier, and his random arrest at Sydney Airport. Yeah, so what did he say? Where he goes, he goes, they've gone, oh, hang on, sir, oh, excuse me, I've got something down there, put, put you in the room, took you in the room, found a bang, police. And I don't know if it's not a federal offence, is it? Oh, is it a federal offence? No, it's no, state's so, uh, the they don't even know what laws they've broken. Their crimes are state-based, not federal. And, and you know what? They're going to have to analyse everything now. There's cameras all over the airport. There's my car dropping him off. There's no ANZ or so bats. I dropped him off, man. Don't worry about the car. I did. I took him to the airport. They had, they had, they had a tape of that, wouldn't they? Well, we don't know yet. We don't know. No, we don't know shit. But the police know it all and the net is closing in. That's it for sure. Wayne Patterson, the Mr. Big of Queensland, has just purchased 430 grams of cannabis, 490 grams of methyl amphetamine, 650 ecstasy tablets, and 1.9 grams of cocaine. Now that's a lucrative cocktail by any standard, and it's all bound for the Gold Coast. Or is it? The, the quantity of drugs that he was taking back, we couldn't let that go back to... Morally, we just couldn't let that go back to Queensland, the way it was. Wayne Patterson can't risk another scare at the airport, so the pair decide to drive back to the Gold Coast. Police need to arrest Wayne Patterson far enough out of Sydney so that the other members of the syndicate don't get tipped off, but before he reaches the Queensland border and offloads the drugs. We made inquiries about the vehicle that they were travelling in and we found out that the vehicle was actually a stolen car uh, from a hire company up in, in Queensland. The stolen car excuse is perfect. That gave us good reason then to have the vehicle stopped. Halfway through his trip, just when he thought he was in the clear, Wayne Patterson is pulled over. Cryovac pack with what appears to me to be um, some form of amphetamine, the yellowy substance. Do either of you gentlemen know anything about that? His immediate the thoughts were just deny, deny that we had any knowledge of the drugs, deny that they were his. Further find here, two cryovac packs, one with what appears to be a um, crystalline substance, I believe to be crystal methylamphetamine. That's the ice supplied by Louis Ivanovsky just eight hours earlier. And another pack with what appears to be uh, MDMA tablets. And that's the ecstasy from Ronnie. Do you know anything about that, gentlemen? There's another package in here. Looks like it's about an elbow, a pin, uh, sorry, a pound of, um, of cannabis. Either of you gentlemen know anything about that? Nothing at all? All right, I'll tell you, fellas, you're both under arrest. Wayne Patterson is handcuffed and led away. He's done millions of dollars in drug deals, but not anymore. 
he's going to jail. So now police are racing against the clock. They have to shut down the rest of the syndicate before anyone finds out about their investigation. And the next to go is Louis Ivanovsky. Remember him? He sold all that ice to Mr Big in the hotel room on credit. Well, he had no idea he was being filmed. And now, police have a little surprise for him. Seems like he's out of the view of the neighbours and we'll just give a quick search. Out of the view of the neighbours, you give me all of this is Louis the supplier's actual police interview and this is the moment when officers reveal to Louis they have secret video of him selling drugs to Wayne Patterson. Is there anything you'd like to say about the video you showed him? Not really, what can I say? There's nothing to say. Do you agree that that's you in the video? Looks like me. But the story isn't over yet. The syndicate is only starting to unravel, and police have many more arrests ahead of them. Next to go, two of the original players, Asian Ken and Ronnie Tao. Detectives have received new intelligence that they're both doing deals with other buyers. Police ramp up surveillance on Ken and watch as he leaves his apartment in Sydney City. Ken walked out of the unit block carrying a bag. An acquaintance of his had hailed down a taxi. They both got into the taxi. Surveillance police were able to stop that taxi about a block away. OK, you have been arrested by police. You are under arrest. Do you understand that? Out of that taxi, you had a red bag. I've secured that red bag. They know Ken is involved, and he must be stopped. Inside that green towel, there's um, white plastic, two white plastic bags with an unknown white substance by the look of it inside. In that bag that Ken was carrying out was approximately two kilos of ice. It's a very strong smell. When police saw the ice, it was it was still wet, so Ken uh, obviously had contacts, and whoever his contacts were would have been close to the manufacturing stage. That ice has a street value of more than $600,000. When police found that, it was just magic. That was the icing on the cake. The net is now also closing in on Ronnie Tao who's just landed a new buyer on the Gold Coast. And police suspect this man is the courier. If they find drugs in this car, they can make the final arrests to close down the whole syndicate. When one drug lord falls, there's always another ready and waiting to set up. Ronnie Tal has just taken an order for 3,000 ecstasy pills from a new buyer in Queensland. And police suspect the driver of this car is transporting the pills to the Gold Coast in time for Indy. The courier is Daniel Saunders. Now police need to find his stash. There's nothing there as yet, but we have the video to search. But police know exactly what it is. It's the 3,000 ecstasy pills. And they know where it's headed. Enter Rochelle Primo. Exotic Gold Coast dancer by night, drug dealer by day. She was like a broker for her friends up there on the Gold Coast. The Indy car race was coming up on the Gold Coast and um, one of her acquaintances puts in an order for 3,000 tablets. Queensland police make a move and do an early morning raid on the pole dancer's apartment. Police find mobile phones, SIM cards and documents directly linking Rochelle and Daniel Saunders to the Wayne Patterson syndicate. We didn't seize any drugs, however she was Clearly from our phone intercepts, we had enough evidence on her to charge her with her involvement 
particularly in regards to the supply of that 3,000 tablets which Daniel Saunders was arrested with. That leaves one final target. Out in the open on a street in Bondi Junction in Sydney, Ronnie Tao is arrested. Mr Tao was under arrest at 2.47pm this afternoon for supplying prohibited drugs. Mr Tao, can you stand around for the camera? Sorry? Do you understand the portion I've just given you, that you don't have to say anything? Yes. Do you understand that I informed you you're under arrest? Yes. And do you agree that I told you that uh, you are, or sorry, you asked me what for, and I told you for the supply of prohibited drugs? Uh, is this, uh, what's the middle choice? Sorry? What's the middle choice? And he was quite uh, surprised to see us, although his comment was that he, he knew what was coming. Every member of the Wayne Patterson Drug Syndicate has now been taken down. It's case closed. The suppliers, Louis Ivanovsky, Ronnie Tal, and Asian Ken, were sentenced to eight, 14, and eight years, respectively. Rochelle Primo, who ordered the 3,000 ecstasy pills, received seven years jail. Drug couriers Daniel Hutton and Daniel Saunders were sentenced to six years and three years behind bars. Scott Van Houten, the driver, got four years and eight months jail time for his role in the syndicate. And as for the puppet master, the Mr. Big of the syndicate, Wayne Patterson, he was sentenced to 16 years in jail.